got a malfunction with my phone there. So I'm just swirling this around. I'm leaving this sort of pretty dark here. I'm going to blend all this out in a second anyway. So you just, we need some uh, sort of contrast at the bottom. We need the, the light, the light area at the bottom to show the dark of the trees. Don't worry about these brush marks, they'll all come out, but you kind of need these little little areas. You know, and if you look at it and think, oh, I don't know what, it's too white, not a problem. You can go back in with your dark. And then obviously as it gets towards the bottom, you just blend that out. I've only loaded the brush in it once properly. Okay, and then just blend these out. You're just creating a little bit of a little bit of movement there. It's the same here at the top, just slightly darker. So I'm just allowing the brush to run out of paint while I'm blending. You like little circular strokes. Too much. I don't want that to stay pretty dark. Okay, so that's enough. I'm going to go back into some Prussian blue just to darken that. So, say if you, if you think it's a little bit too light, just apply some darker colour again. paper towel, just knock off the, the excess unless you've got a spare brush. I'm going to use my two inch brush just to blend. I just want to blend these out lightly with just a few hairs on the brush. Very, very important to allow your, your brush handle to loosen. I don't want to see uh, this sort of thing. This is what doesn't allow you to paint properly. So you just want to be nice and loose as you're brushing away. If you start finding you've got lines on your canvas with the blacks, it's because you've you're applying too much pressure on the brush. Okay, so you want to be nice and light with your stroke. And once you've done that, you're just brushing out any brush marks that you've got. It's very important this edge to soften that edge because we don't want to have a hard line which will cause um, problems for the viewer. So I'm going to use like a blender brush, I'm going to just blend it out the edge. So you can't really see where that starts or it begins. You don't want to end up with a hard line, you just want to kind of make it, and also you don't want it a straight line, you want to light bounces around all the time. You just want to make sure that that's all, all good to go. Nice and light. Okay, pretty good from here. So you can start to see the, the colours that you've got that are just uh, obviously with the moon shining, you're going to get a few little soft spots, and you've got the dark bits underneath, which just creates the illusion of distance rather than it being one flat colour. Okay. So the next thing with the fan brush, this is quite a tricky, uh, not tricky, <laughs> quite a cheeky little way of uh, doing a lot of work without doing a lot. Um, so we've basically got, we've got our titanium white, 
and we've obviously pulled that out for the uh, the sky. So we've now got liquid white here. So I'm going to be using a little bit of titanium white, but I'm going into the liquid white. Both. I probably want to thin that down. So I'm just going to grab a bit of painting medium. I want this really thin. Just load up. So, you want to know how to put a thousand stars in the sky in one go. So we've got the end of the brush loaded, a little bit of paint, and all we're going to be doing is pulling back on the bristles, pulling back and flicking on the canvas. Do it from about 12 inches away. Don't do this in your living room. Your partner won't be happy. But it gives a lovely starry effect. We've got the big dipper here, I think. But it's a, it's a lovely effect. And people will think you've sat there for hours painting these. When we know, we know. We don't want it to be that hard to paint, do we? There you go. So you don't want to go mad, but you want to have enough just so that you've got the effect up there. A few more up there. Okay, so you've got that lovely sort of starry sky. You probably can't see it very well on there. Um, but we're putting some stills up of this video so you can actually see. So that's pretty much that hard work done. Obviously don't blend that out. If you blend that out, you'll end up with comets in the sky, although you could potentially do that if you really wanted to. So, so we've got the, the night sky done. So the, the important bit is the contrast, because obviously this is near land. There's gonna be a little bit of light from the moon, the trees and everything else, but we need the light area to show the dark trees. Obviously, if we started putting dark fir trees on dark background, you're not gonna see them. So we need the dark with the light to show the dark again. And obviously, as it gets up higher into space, it's darker and it's blended out, okay? So, that's that. So like all these paintings, you can actually decide what you're doing as you go. You might make an, an accident with something, but you just correct it and do something else. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to carefully pop off our contact paper, which has again got the paint underneath. Okay, so you want to be careful here, so you want to kind of pull this off. So as we pull it off, pull it off away. So you pull that away, then you've got your nice moon. So again, it just all, all, all of a sudden starts looking like a real painting, which is really cool. We haven't really done a lot. And what I said at the beginning of the video is this is acrylic underpainting. So we've got, that's just virtually nothing on there, a bit of a sponge and, and it, you'll get your paint bleed and that's, there's nothing wrong with that because the, you don't want it looking like it's perfectly round. Obviously, I've got a little bit of bleed out here, which I'll need to um, sort out. Another one of those, have a little accidents. Okay, so we're gonna grab a filbert brush and we're just gonna be using the oil painting medium, clear painting medium with a filbert brush. We're just going into it, and this is exactly the same as what you put on the black gesso, but we need it there to allow us to mix the paint. So we don't go all the way to the edge because what we don't want to end up with is a blue with a yellow mixing. We end up with a funny kind of colored looking sky. 
Now a bit of paper towel. I think I've got some paint thinner on there. I just want to clean that brush out a little bit. Pull that down. You don't have to have this too wet. This can just as long as you've got something. Take your time with the edge and scrub that in. I'm going to have to clean that off. So if you do get your paint, you just just want to pull it out just to clean off in the edge. That's not a problem. Doesn't matter you get a little bit, just get rid of most of it. We just don't want a green moon. So that's pretty good. If you ever get that and you what you need to do then is put red lizard and crimson or something, midnight black against it. Don't just go straight into the yellow because you'll end up with a green moon. You will get that sometimes with the the paint bleeding. As I say, with the wet and wet te technique, once you get used to it, you start blending. Don't you don't panic. You just blend out what you've got, and eventually. Clear off the blue or whatever colour it is. So take your time with this. You've done quite a lot of the painting already, so you want to get this right. You don't want to have too much oil on here, but you want enough just so that we can blend the edge. I mean the wet and wet technique Alaprima has been around since the 14th century. Many artists claim obviously that to be their own. A few different artists that have adapted it. And that's what we're doing. We're just adapting what we've been taught to make it our own. You know, when you're out walking and that, and if you get any pictures of the, the moon in the sky, just take some pictures. You Sometimes it can just be as a tree in a way, but you just use that as a reference photo for your own work. Try and develop your own picture rather than just copying someone else's. Because you will never copy it exactly the same. So why waste time copying someone else's when you can do your own? That's my view on it anyway. So, looks like we've got quite a good surface here with the moon. So you just it's your decision about where you're going to start putting things. You know, are you going to um, you want your where do you want your highlight to be? So we're going to do because it's at the moment it's flat, so we need to have dark medium and light tones to make the moon look round. So what we do now is go into a little bit of um, alizarin and crimson with my filbert brush. Just start off with a little tiny bit first because remember you've got the wet paint up the top there. We don't want to set the moon alight too much. We just want to start off here and it doesn't matter if this catches the, the blue because red and blue will make up a purple anyway. And when you're painting this, don't do X's, try and do round shapes. So try and paint it that shape. Don't don't do this because it because it will it will look a bit strange. And because we've got the gesso underneath already. And this is transparent. 
you can, can you can kind of see the textures underneath. And you know when people ask you after you, your classes or when you've done something, how did you do that? You say, oh, it's just lots of practice, which it always is. But don't make it sound that, that it was so easy. You know, you've worked hard to get to this stage with your painting. Too many people out there that think uh, piece of cake painting when we all know the struggles we have as artists. So as I say, as you're coming round, just come round with a curve. So you're, you're constantly creating that curve around to this bottom. And I'm conscious of that blue that I brought into the picture from my disc. So I just want to darken that at the bottom as a barrier with my yellow. So when I go into the yellow, it's not going to turn green. So you just bring that underneath here. It's already created a kind of barrier. And this is just my first coat, so I kind of want to bring this in. It's probably not bright enough. I want to kind of darken this back edge here. So I just want to get this front bit in. enough crimson that side and see automatically it's picking up some of that other colour. I'll go back in and make this a little bit darker. That's better. I kind of want the different tones. That's a lot better. Like that. Painting's all about making mistakes and then learning from them for next time. You're never going to have perfect days all the time, depending on what mood you're in, what's happened in your life. You know, sometimes you can have a really dark and horrendous coloured painting, but it reflects your mood that day and that's perfectly fine. And then you'll have other days, you'll have a nice, happy, bright little painting something else might happen even while you're doing it because of other people selfish people sometimes so you just got to kind of immerse into your own world so remember and try and get this dark darker so you can kind of see already we're kind of creating the shape of the moon we're creating the the, the, the sphere so it's, it's worth spending a bit of time doing this Almost looks like the man in the moon. <laughs> but we can see how we're creating, we've still got that curve going on. But don't overblend it, leave it kind of streaky in patches just so it looks like texture. Let's just stand back and have a look. I'm going to put a little bit more in there because it's still, because it's transparent, it's still, you can still see underneath. I'm going to make this, get this right. That's better. Okay, you can always come back into that. So, I'm going to wipe that on a paper towel a little bit okay put that down a second do, 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 do. it's just important to get out when you're mixing other colours obviously red and yellow make an orange so it's going to blend anyway so we just want to, we've gone into the, the alizarin crimson which we've used for the pretty much the moon. So now we're going to go into the mid-tone which is Indian yellow, this one here. So this is a nice colour. This is probably one of the thinnest colours in your palette. Yellow is very, very firm generally. It's not as firm as white. But. So we just want to load your, your brush up just so you've actually got 
um, a different colour on there. And then we're just going to be sweeping in, so again we're, we're kind of sweeping in with this curve and we're going to be pulling into the orange, the orange, sorry, the this is crimson. I've got orange on my head, brain in it today, I think. And then we're going to be sort of coming here, pulling round. So again, we're pulling round the shape. I'm leaving that front edge because I'm probably going to be going in there with some um, cadmium yellow. We're kind of making that. And then as we come through, we want to be blending. And as, when you blend it, we're going to be getting a orange effect, hopefully. Get one. We just blend them until we've got a, a good consistency of colours. And all the time you do this, you can always add or take away. I'm going to kind of bring, sort of bring it in. Different tones. Just turn it around. I just want to say again, very, very lightly blend that so you haven't got three separate colours. You want to kind of make it so that they're um, blending just blend that in you kind of get in the three become one color just pulling in slightly Use a one inch brush for this. I'm just using a blender just for the video. You just want to say bleed all the colours together so it kind of already looks like it's got some sort of shape to it rather than a random C shape like the man in the moon. We've got a kind of zig zigzaggy bit. You can always go back in, it's the same, and check that bit out, do that again. And I'm just going to go. Here again, just to make sure the yellow's fine. And then I'm going to go into the cadmium yellow without cleaning the brush. So this will be a slightly lighter yellow when it goes up there. It's always about tones. Okay, let's go up here. So we're just going to, on that back edge, be very, very careful. Don't go right up to the blue, because we'll end up with greens. We're going to finish that a little bit off with some white. So I'm just kind of polishing this up. So we've got some other colours. I don't need a lot of this. Okay, so pretty much got that. I've left that white edge there. So I'm now going to go into, let's wipe my brush off a little bit. Beep, 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 beep. I'm just going to go into some titanium white it will have a little bit of yellow on it but it will be very very light like a lemon color you just want to pull very very gentle so pulling don't go into the paint that way because when you pull it this way load the brush both sides so the final bit on this is just to go into the the very top edge very very carefully just back brush 
into it again just to get rid of that extra layer we've put in. So I've kind of so I've got my dark, my mid, my light, but I've got the highlight so you can now see there's a highlight edge and that's just pure white with a little bit of the yellow still on the brush which creates that illusion, like illusions. Okay, so there's your moon in all its glory. So we need to have some um, something to push the moon back now. So we need some trees here, um, which are gonna, again, because we've got the light barrier, we have to have them dark, okay? So just clean off your paper towel. Make sure your brushes are clean. So we've still got our blue. We don't need the moon brushes, which were the, the fan brush and the filbert brush. Um, you can put those to one side, but if you think if you've mucked anything up and you've still got your your brush, you can actually keep that to one side. This is what I call your rescue brush, ready for the rest of the painting. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a tidy up here. I'm getting a bit messy in the old days. Okay, so palette knives. We need to add dark colours, so we're going to grab some some of the Lism Crimson, some of the Midnight Black, Prussian Blue, Phthalo Blue. I'll probably pick most of the blue up. So we're picking up a dark colour, and it will be a bit purple as well because of the colours that we've got in there. A dark colour, pick all that midnight black up. So we've got Prussian blue, midnight black, alizarin crimson. We've got a dark colour, kind of to the red of the purple. So that's my colour. You can have a little bit more blue if you want, actually. So I'll put a bit more blue to take it back to the blue side rather than the red. It's entirely up to you what colour you want your, your trees to be because these are dark and because that's darker than the night sky that'll give you a contrast. You always need to work on contrast that's why we have the dark to show the light. Bum, 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 bum. So we have our fan brush. Where's that one? So make sure it's clean. And we're just gonna go into the fan, go into the paint that we've mixed up. So we're pulling it down. So we've got a nice lot of colour in the brush. Pulling down, pulling down. So you end up with a nice roll of paint and your bristles are closed, what we call a chiselled edge. Okay, we can see that. There we go. So we kind of want to, we've got trees going here, but I want to put something behind and sort of back. So we just want to kind of start up with your handle um, up. So we, it's just where you want them to be. So we kind of, we can sort of start here. Because you've got the light there, it's showing the dark. And that's what I do. These are distant, distant, distant trees. So there's not too much detail, but we're kind of wanting to make a little, might even put a little baby waterfall here, maybe, I don't know. You can make it up as you go along. That's the beauty of this. Coming down. Bum, 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 bum. Haven't loaded the brush yet. It's important that you do load your brush when you're, you're going in. I'm loading it again now. So 
So I'm pulling it down both directions and then wiggle the brush both sides. Let's go back up here. So still the same colour but because we've got the light that's there, the dark, and some of these are darker than those, so these look like they're in front of that and that's great and that's fine. You want to create the depth in your picture when you're coming down. And you wouldn't be able to do this if you hadn't put this on in the first place. Okay, so this looks like it's quite hilly, so I'm going to sort of stop about there. And then I'm going to just tap that bottom out just to mist it a little bit. I'm probably going to use my little blue brush. So I'm just going to tap these out. a barrier it's creating some sort of land mass there and by doing that we can put another layer in front if we want because we've now got the light again it's neat yeah and then pull up So we've got one row in there. Okay, so let's just do the same colour and see what that looks like on there. So we're running it out to a chiselled edge again. It's very, very important that the brush is loaded correctly. Okay, let's go up here. So I want to leave a little gap here. So again, these are bit nearer you want them to be random you don't want it looking like a fence post because these are nearer every now and again you might have one that's a little bit more detailed so you just put make that a bit more Distinguish just every now and again. You just put a real tree in with your cloud. Sound like an American accent there. So we've got a, a nice, we've set the, the stall as we call it, of the lay of the land. The lay of the land is so important. And here we just blend out the bottom. We're putting some big trees in front of this anyway. Some of this is going to be covered up. Again, you could make it become a snow scene, it could be whatever you want it to be. Pull that up just to get rid of that hard edge. Okay, so we've kind of got the, the idea here, and then we're going to probably do the same here, um, but we've, we want to kind of get the we want to get these in the background. You know, we can put the big trees over the front of it. So we kind of want to, um, maybe this is sort of starting to come up here. But again, you have to have the, the dark. You have to have the dark to show the light.
just like it's in a little valley somewhere. So we want to kind of make sure it's whether we're just going to close that off or leave that like that. So we'll decide about that in a minute. Whether you want another plane in there, but obviously this gap, your eye's going to be drawn to that. So obviously we've got huge fir trees going in front of this, so I'm probably just going to put these in here and join them. If we join them, then it closes off the picture. So you could have, you know, say that you could have put a waterfall in there if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but here I want to kind of is so far away I kind of want to just sort of finish that there I think just to, could just be the end of the range there and these are the ones that are so far away that you're not you're not worried too much about them time that just diffuses it also can look like other trees but you're softening the bottom edge all the time you've got a little bit of light zinging through there so try and get some of those up so you haven't got a, a complete line keep the brush going straight that kind of looks like a really distant valley but it's also creating depth in your paint okay so there's no need to highlight any of these because they're too far away so what we're going to do now is pull out the brush again so pull it out wiggle that edge turn it over wiggle the edge so you've still got that sharp leading edge okay so it's just a question of what we want to finish off here and the thing is because of the, the light and dark if we put some big trees here then that's potentially going to become the base of wherever you want to, to finish so so I'm just going to start off up here so I'm going to put a, a tree here I'm just going to put the indication of a tree Start off with the, the brush, very, very light at the top, and then as you come down, using the whole of the bristles. This is a huge fir tree. Let's sort of put that down to there. Okay, you probably can't see much of that in the moment, but uh, when we highlight that in a minute, you'll see it. You'll see the next one because we're going to go over the moon now. So it's very, very important. You pull out, bring your edge into a chiseled edge onto your brush. You can use other brushes as well. So we're just going to pop this one um, kind of here and pop that. So we start off light. Bending more of the bristles, kind of working in a Z or a Z format. And coming down to the bottom, it's you, you're then using the whole of the brush. But each time you do a tree, you reload your brush. So chiseled edge, perhaps this one's up. Yeah. 
quite funny because this is already putting the highlights because of the colour underneath. But that, what that's doing, you want to leave gap in between these so you can see the moon. But don't worry about these background ones, you're only ever putting them in just to give you a base. And as you come down, you're hitting harder and harder using the whole of the brush. You get down to the bottom. Each time pulling that brush out with lots of colour. Okay, I'm going to sort of put one about there. And then we're starting off just with the corner, very, very light pressure. That was in forward, like, like you're doing a Z shape. And then as you come down. hard, loading up, really loaded your brush up, and you've got some really good bristles bending all the way down to the bottom. Very, very important that you you keep the the trees separate here so that it looks you can see the moon, which creates the distance in the picture. If we can highlight these in a second, some of these. I'm going to put one over the other side now. Just make sure you keep picking all your paint up, pulling it down. Do, 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 do. Okay, pulling the brush down both sides and wiggle. See, you've got loads. Okay, let's come up here. I'm going to put a big one up here. Sometimes this all makes me feel like it's Christmas, I don't know why. way you do the fir tree every fir tree is different some have got gaps in the branches I'll do one now we've got gaps and we've got, got one here okay so we start off picking both sides As you 
come down, you end up using the whole of the brush at the bottom. Bend those bristles. These little gaps here create the illusion of distance. So don't kill all your dark and certainly don't kill all your light. So some of these you won't see for the minute. Here. I'm going to put much more in. I think I'll probably put another one this side and then we'll highlight. Uh, I'll put one about here. Don't have them all the same. Okay, let's put some little trees here. Bum, 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 bum. And then at the bottom here. Here, just to soften this bottom edge. I'll put a couple of little smaller fir trees in there actually. That closes that valley off. snow in there maybe, I don't know, I'm going to have a look in a second, brighten that up, <clears throat> so change your mind, make it your own picture, So, just going to try something, something slightly different, which is um, it's going to go into a little bit of our mixture, just to darken this my brush down. Put this in here. So I've got enough paint there. Then I'm just going to go through. <coughs> lighter colour just a little bit just to see what what happens when I'm just wanna always darken this up. I just just want to kind of finish this off with some sort of land in front of the trees which again will create another plane but it can't be it can't be too light because if it's too light it will be out of context of the, the light is shining here so this is all behind the trees but it's just giving it could be snow yeah i think that's the right way put a little bit of white in it so always add you can always add to it once you've uh but yeah so we've got a little bit of light Dark there, just to kind of finish the 
bottom edge off. Sets the, little, sets the trees down. I think it does anyway. So I'm sort of pulling in one direction because the land is going this way. I'm just pulling under those trees just to set them, set them down. And the brush is all going in the same direction because I've already decided the land, the lay of the land is this way. Soften these out a little bit, don't need to be really bright. The moon's probably just catching the light. about this wet and wet style you just change it as you go so just by pulling in keeping the angles the same diffusing the bottom you're creating a, another plane another bit of depth into your picture some colour in there. Yeah, that's pretty okay. So it's just using the dirty one inch brush to give it and again the old golden rule but your dark and light effect you're just trying to create an illusion all the time obviously when you get to the corners try to watch your dark and your light put a little bit up here maybe just where the, the moon's just catching that corner if you, and if you don't like this Make think oh it's too bright, I'll just go over it with some dark, no problem. Okay, so we've created a kind of land mass. Okay. So sort of just to finish off, we just want to go through our light blue. We've got our dark blue that was on for our trees, so we're just gonna not clean that, just go through. I'm going to keep that a little bit darker. Don't want it too light. If it's too light, it'll look a bit odd. Okay, so let's just highlight. Random. Don't do every one. You see as it gets down near the bottom, it's darker. You just want these just to pop out. Because obviously you can't see your dark without the light, and vice versa. So you want to kind of out the odd where the moon's just catching it maybe this is darker down here that's going to push that down in shadow Very, very light pressure here. So it's tiny bits of highlight. Probably pull those into view on the ground. Just randomly select little bits of 
bits of foliage but make sure you leave some of the dark yeah really hope you've enjoyed watching this one I've always liked I say black gessos very uh, forgiving Funny how I've become very, very, my voice changes when I'm concentrating. <laughs> so you've got your styles in there. And you've got a little bit of a path. to the left side, a little bit to the right just to show it up, if you want to catch that, but this isn't white, this is like a, a variant of the blue, light blue, Same with this one up here, so just very, very light pressure. If you're left handed, your handle is going to be down this way, if you're right handed, your handle is going to be here. Very, very light pressure. It's just to accentuate the leaf patterns, leave a lot of the dark, leave some space in your painting. down to the bottom, very, very light pressure. And you can kind of pull those in if you want, or you can leave them alone. The last one up here. there and then just to finish off um, just want to pull that little edge just where the, the tree dropped down just pull it in just so that it looks like it's part of the painting watch your angles just pull the bottom part of the tree in. And that just makes them sit onto the picture. The same here, watch your angles, very, very light pressure. Pulling that in. Remember this is a night time sky. So there you go, simple little, simple little painting, one that is a very very popular in class, every time it goes on it sells out, so hopefully you've learnt a bit from that and I'll see you again, happy painting. <laughs>